Hello and welcome to the subscribers of AVG News. My name is Onisi, the son of Nome. Uh, I come here to update you on the on two things really. That is first I want to talk about the recalls of Triple C members from Parliament. You will know that uh Sengezo Chabamu who claims that he is the interim secretary general of the mainstream opposition party, wrote to the speaker of parliament a few weeks ago, stating that he was recalling uh, members of Triple C who had been elected uh, into the National Assembly uh, in the elections, that is the harmonized elections, which took place on the 23rd and 24th of August this year. So he recalled them. He said that they had seized to be members of the Triple C. He did not state the main reasons uh, around which they ceased to be members uh, of the party. Uh, and uh, we are still trying to have an interview with him. He has promised us a number of times, but uh, due to one or two things, we haven't been able to carry out that interview because he would uh, be busy elsewhere because you'll know that a number of people, a number of journalists back home are chasing him all over the place because this is an, inter an interesting uh, case, it's an interesting scenario, it's an unprecedented uh, scenario whereby somebody who hasn't been known for some time as having occupied a certain position uh, wakes up or pops up and recalls people from parliament. You will know that Triple C have always said that have always say that they don't have structures, they don't have uh, certain positions filled other than the president who is Nelson Chamisa uh, and the spokespersons previously it was advocate um, Fatsai Mahere deputized, deputized by uh, Gift Ostalo Siziba and then when Mahere was shifted from that position to an unknown position as of now the post was occupied by Mr. Promise Mkwanazi, still deputized by Gift Ostello Ziba. So then it shook, it shocked everyone. Uh, let me say, it shook and shocked everyone that uh, Chabamus read its letter to the National Speaker of Parliament, uh, advocate uh, Jacob Mudenda, got the response that it received. And it was so swift uh, before anything else these people had been recalled and by election set a court uh, a court uh, application to have the recall set aside failed so all in all 23 people were recalled but uh, the nomination court is going to sit today it is sitting uh, as we speak to process papers of those that want to stand uh, in the by-elections uh, altogether it's 23 people but uh, today uh, the court will process papers for nine houses uh, for nine seats uh, in the national house of assembly that is the lower house which is parliament so what is actually happening is that the zimbabwe electoral commission has been granted by government it was granted last week a, uh, some money to the tune of 5.3 million US dollars to process uh, these by-elections, to hold these by-elections or supervise these by-elections. So uh, we are having the nomination court sitting today, which is the 7th of November. And then next month, almost uh, just over a month from now, we are going to see the by-elections being held because what we are told is that Triple C doesn't intend to appeal their loss uh, at the Harare High Court last week. Uh, so we don't foresee them appealing. They might change because they do sometimes change. But what we are expecting right now is that they are not going to appeal and the recalls will stand that is why the nomination court is sitting today then on the 9th of december we are going to go 
to the by elections so it's nine houses of assembly uh, you will remember that on on the 10th i mean on saturday rather uh there is a by election in the Kutu west constituency where one of the candidates that had passed through nomination court died before the elections were held so on saturday there will be an election uh, in the Kutu constituency it's a by election caused by the death of a candidate so we don't know who triple c are going, are going to put there we don't know who signed for them but what we know for certain is that today triple c candidates who are going to stand will be signed for by Sengezo Chabang. and from where we are standing we've been told that uh, advocate nelson chamisa is not going to provide candidates but yes it might change because we may hear some surprises after the nomination court has set uh, or during the nomination court where some of the candidates that have been recalled by Chabamu might choose to stand as independents and you will know that each candidate who stands has to pay a thousand dollars that is equivalent to 20,000 rands in Zimbabwean rights for each candidate so they might decide to stand as uh, independents and what we know is that if advocate chamisa campaigns for them they are going to win because we don't foresee uh, any of the people that charm advances winning against uh, the weight of nelson chamisa that is a fact especially in the urban centers where chamisa is held in high esteem where triple c because of this value that is attached to nelson chamisa is held in high esteem so these are the constituencies where the nomination court will sit today and where by elections will be held on the 9th of december it's paid bridge west being a north Bulawayo South, Kautre Park, Lopengula Makwekwe, Lupane East, Mavuku Tafara, Mpopo Mamziligazi, and Ngeta constituencies. Bait Bridge West, Binga North, Binga South, Kautre Park, Lopengula Makwekwe, Lupane East, Mavuku Tafara, Mpopo Mamziligazi, and Ngeta. So these are the constituencies where by elections will be held but where the nomination court sits today and then the second issue that we want to talk about is the ongoing uh, mixed messages that are coming out of what transpired at the SADC extraordinary summit i know many of you have seen uh, the conflicting reports coming out of there with many uh, rooting for the opposition being of the opinion that um, the SADC did have intense discussions uh, around the elections in Zimbabwe, around the election observer mission uh, on the Zimbabwean elections. We have seen some journalists as well tweeting this, some even writing uh, in their newspapers, others posting on their YouTube channels that indeed there were intense discussions. We also interviewed a member of the triple c who is their chairperson in south africa and he said that uh, what they are getting is that there have been intense discussions around zimbabwe and that the uh, election observer mission report was adopted and to them when they say it was adopted they are saying that the election in zimbabwe was nullified and therefore there is going to be a fresh election in zimbabwe and as we have always said before we know there is a lot of desperation out there we know that people are desperate for a change of government in Zimbabwe. We know that Zimbabweans are tired of the suffering that they've been thrown into since 1980 by a ZANU-PF-led government. We know that people want to see the back of ZANU-PF as of yesterday. That is mainly people who are based in the diaspora and people who are based in the urban centers. But what we must know also is that Zimbabwe is a bipolar political situation 
whereby we have two economies we have the rural economy and the urban economy and these two economies are also now political economies where one holds sway in one and the other holds sway in the other and right now what is happening is that ZANU-PF holds a lot of sway in the rural areas forget about intimidation but because of the economic statuses of these two areas we are now having a tale of two areas in the same country whereby people in the rural areas because everything they own is based on the land we talk about livestock we talk about their farms uh, farming uh, areas we talk about their fields we talk about uh, everything that they control being based on the land and to them the fight between zanu pf and triple c or between zanu pf and the opposition is a fight for either the protection or loss of the land this is how zanu pf has structured their messages their political messages when they go to the rural areas their message is that triple c wants to reverse the gains of the liberation struggle the triple c wants to take away the land that they have which they fought for and the people there have bought that they don't understand anything about inflation they don't understand anything about employment or lack thereof they don't understand and hear a lot of other things because to them everything they need is within grasp they have the land they have their cattle they can sell they farm they they, they, they produce their own food and they don't usually go and buy stuff uh, in the shops. so the rising cost of living to them uh, is not as highly felt as it is in the urban centers and these people believe in zanu pf they highly believe in zanu pf and they make the most uh, number of voters in zimbabwe so to them the elections are done and dusted then there is the urban population which goes through the rigors of the rising of the ever rising cost of uh, living high inflation unemployment uh, a disastrous lifestyle where people end up having to bury themselves in alcohol abuse in drug abuse these are the people who are very angry and then those who are in the diaspora who are being insulted every day who despite having degrees have to work manual jobs and live uh, in uh, areas where they are cramped up in, in in human conditions and they are every day having to put up with insults from the host with uh the ridicule from host and exploitation at the workplace some of them don't even don't even have proper documents to be in the countries where they are working so they're being exploited there these are also people who are angry with zanu pf but the uh, the diasporans, as you know, cannot vote in their bases where they are because Zimbabwe doesn't have the diaspora vote as of now, although it is included in the constitution. So these are the people who hate zanu -PF, and many of them, because they work manual jobs, could not travel back home to register and then travel back to vote because they don't have the money. They struggle to pay their own rent. This is the actuality on the ground so these ones are the ones who are desperate for a change of government these are the ones who are desperate for fresh elections these are the ones who flood the social media as well because they have data they have uh easy access to the internet this is where they pile their misery this is where they outpour the anger that they have and these are the people who are some of them creating these smokes and mirrors some of them are doing it for cloud chasing others are doing it because they wish this could happen to them is some form of advocacy to them is some form of uh wishing it for so much that it ends up maybe becoming true but now having said that what is happening is that zimbabwe was not intensely discussed at the SAC summit i know we told you before the summit that though you must expect nothing out of it and we told you that there will be no fresh elections in zimbabwe 
and you insulted us, some of you, there are many who believed us because we have never misled people, we have never lied to people. It is not our intention to lie to people. There are journalists out there who for reasons of being loved by the oppositions, of wanting to be loved by the oppositions, or for reasons of being paid to peddle certain propaganda by either the opposition or those who sponsor them, would want to keep you hopeful that something is happening. And then there's the opposition itself because they want you to continue trusting them, to not lose hope in them, to they want to remain relevant to you. They don't want to appear as if they are doing nothing because they are doing nothing. But they want you to believe that, no, 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 these guys are doing something, their advocacy is working, they have spoken to the SAT, they have spoken to a number of other people, so therefore elections are going to happen. There will be no fresh elections. The main reason why SAT held an extraordinary summit was because there is intense fighting in the DRC and they want to intervene there. Not because of Zimbabwe, to them, the Zimbabwean elections are done and dusted. They received that report. If anything, whatever is going to happen as a, a way of such uh, intervening is to make sure that the next election, which is the 20, uh, 2028 election, will have some semblance of respectability, uh, which makes it better than the one they just had, that we just had. Other than that, there is no way that the SAT can force a, a fresh election in Zimbabwe. They don't have that mandate. They don't have that power. They don't have that authority to force an election. The only way they can have uh, a leeway to try and suggest maybe a GNU or a National Transitional Authority or a new election is when a Zimbabwean court has nullified elections in Zimbabwe because SAT respects the internal processes of a, a, a member country, they respect the sovereignty of a member country. So right now, there is no Zimbabwean court which has declared the elections null and void. So therefore, there will be no fresh election in Zimbabwe. And unless and until ZANU-PF changes their mind, there won't be a GNU. We have to be straightforward with you. We hate also to be party poopers. We hate to be the bearers of bad news. But for as long as that news is factual, we will deliver it to you. And how you adjust to it is up to you. But for purposes of not allowing you to continue wasting your time believing in things that don't exist, just know that there will be no fresh elections in Zimbabwe. And if there were fresh elections, as many of you have been misled into believing, there was no way that the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission or the Zimbabwean government would waste money to the tune of US $5.3 million holding a by-election, knowing pretty well that there is still going to be a fresh election in the country. So using your own logic, you must know that these by-elections mean one thing. There is not going to be a fresh election. So stop following people who mislead you uh, deliberately. Because they want to, clear, to, to chase some clout, because they want to remain relevant, because they want you to continue to believe in them. Don't believe in them. There will be no fresh election in Zimbabwe. What is going to happen is that Zimbabwe, the nomination court is sitting today. There will be by-elections on the 9th of December unless and until Triple C goes back to court and appeals these uh, recalls and win for the court to set aside these by-elections. But the fresh elections won't be there. There will be no fresh election. What is also going to happen, it is likely that Chabam will still recall more people, especially those he considers to be dissidents, those who don't want to agree with him, those who don't want uh, to, to, to recognize him as the Secretary General of the party. He is still going to recall them, and there may be even more by-elections. So we don't want to be proven right in these bad uh, incidences where we keep on telling you uh, otherwise of what you believe but you would rather hate us but in the fullness of time you will get to know that we don't seek to mislead you and we are giving you this information painful as it is for your own good for your own benefit so that you don't waste your time and energy investing them 
in things that don't exist just because some people will want to tell you what you want to listen to, what you want to hear, continue to mislead you. So this is what we had for you right now. We will continue to try and get Sengezo Chabang to speak to us in a Zoom interview. Then we'll bring that back to you. But we did speak to him via audio and we posted that video, I mean that video yes, yesterday where he was saying that uh, he's happy with the court uh, ruling and is now preparing for by elections so this is what is happening right now we don't know because this is going to be a long protracted battle for the control of triple c because chairman already is saying that he is revisiting the structures of the mdc alliance of the mdc rather uh, t of 2019 and he wants to set this in motion he says he wants to put back constitutionalism and fight back the what he tends to be the personalization of the party and favoritism within the party so if it goes back to 2019 there are people who are not members of triple c or, or of mtc t in 2019 we're talking about people like uh advocate mahere we're talking about people like uh, a number of other others of them like promise mkwanazi was not known to be uh, an office bearer back then he's or gift or stalos is we were not office parents in triple c in, in mdct rather back then so we don't know what is exactly going to happen but we want to get to the root of this matter because it is not bad it's not good for the opposition it's not occurring well for the opposition and the only beneficiary out of this is not the people of zimbabwe it's not even chabang himself it's not triple c but it is zanu pf because now they've got a chance to have a go again at the two-thirds majority that they want although they want to deny that they want to the, uh, the, the two-thirds majority to change the constitution but the fact remains that they do want it they want it it's what they were gunning for even when they went to the elections on 23 august they were always drumming up the need for them to get the two-thirds majority and this is what they want so this is what we had for you don't forget to subscribe to this channel to like this video and to share it and if we disappoint you with this factual reporting we are sorry but this is the only thing that we were born to do this channel was formed to give you nothing but correct information fact-based reporting thank you